Hey friends, welcome back. Today you are going to join me on a little bit of a flashback. This is a tutorial of how I built the modern birdhouse that was showcased in my garden at the Northwest Flower and Garden Show. Check out the description box below. I have provided a supply and cut list there for quick and easy reference. First things first, you are gonna head over and pick up a three quarter inch by eight inch by eight foot cedar board. As you make your selection, I want you turning it over, checking to make sure it is straight as an arrow without any warping or splitting at the ends. This is gonna make your life so much easier when you go to build your birdhouse. After grabbing my board, I picked up a spar urethane for the body of the birdhouse. I also grabbed some glossy yellow to play with, a little bit of Gorilla Wood Glue, and some wood filler. Make sure it says it is stainable and paintable. More on that later. Next, I picked up a few extra one and a quarter inch brad nails. We are using a nail gun here, but I'm sure you could also go old school with a hammer and nails. Okay, literally what I need is right back there. What is even happening here? There's like 8,000 things in the way. Jeez. <sighs> I made it. Yes. We also picked up a piece of dowel. I'll go into more on that later. Last, a little bit of black spray paint for my galvanized post. I opted for a matte finish here. I began by cutting three pieces at 12 inches long. What you don't see me do here is begin by cutting just a little bit off the top of your board. This will ensure that all of your pieces are perfectly square. Two of those 12 inch long pieces will be used for the front and the back of my birdhouse. The third, I'm actually gonna cut down to four and a quarter inches wide. This is gonna be used for the left hand side of my birdhouse. Next, you'll need to cut the bottom plate. I'm cutting a four and a quarter inch by six and a quarter inch piece. Now for my birdhouse, I really wanted to pull it more in that modern direction and echo the clean modern lines of the pergola that I would be creating for the garden show. So what I did is I cut a 10 inch length board for the top and a 14 inch long board for the side. This is gonna give me about a two inch overhang and really create that nice dramatic line that I'm going for. Once I have my pieces cut, I'm gonna first go in with some 80 grit sandpaper. Once I get it to a good point, I then switched over to 180 grit for a beautifully smooth finish to the board prior to applying my spar urethane and finishing it off. I'm actually using a Festool sander here and it is so, so good and so satisfying. What's also wonderful is that using this sander, it massively cuts down on the amount of dust and little particulate that is floating everywhere every time you do a sanding project. Oh man, I wish you could reach through the screen and feel this board. It is perfection. The last thing you're gonna see me do here is actually sand down the end of this dowel. I'm trying to get it to a thickness where it will actually, uh, we can insert it into that galvanized post that I picked up at the hardware store. This is gonna be super crucial because we need to construct everything on site, but then also take it down with us. I'm going to mark out the center of my hole to be at three and three quarter inches down from the top of the birdhouse. I'm gonna be using a one and a half inch circular drill bit because I want this to be a bit on the smaller side, something more appealing to say my favorite bird, which is a black cap chickadee. Now 
Next, I'm going to grab a three quarter inch drill bit for the bottom of my birdhouse because this is actually what I'm going to then slip over that dowel that's going to sit on top of the galvanized post. I'm going to go ahead and give this a light sand, nothing too precious, because I am going to give this entire thing a final once over before I apply the stain. All right, friends, it is assembly time. We are gonna be using clamps because last I checked, I only had two hands. We are also gonna follow the same pattern all the way around with this assembly. Glue, clamp, nail. So here we go. Starting at the base, you're gonna see me apply probably a little bit too much glue here. I'm gonna go ahead and use a scrap piece of wood just to smooth it out and remove any excess. We are going to clamp the face in place and then start nailing in. I'm gonna work my way around to the side and then finish off with the back of the birdhouse. I would also like to note here that I am using 8,000 <laughs> clamps because here's the deal. I'm a landscaper. I'm not a carpenter. And it is actually impressive that I checked this board over and I still managed to pick a totally warped board. Anyways, this is life. So we're leaving it in. 8,000 clamps at all. At long last, the body is fully assembled and I'm gonna go ahead and leave it clamped and set it aside to dry overnight. Meanwhile, I am grabbing the top and longer side piece and we're just gonna go ahead and throw that L shape together. One thing you aren't gonna see me do here that I would highly recommend is just make sure that you have like a speed square or something handy so you can check to make sure you are actually creating a proper 90 degree angle so that when you go to assemble your birdhouse, it will actually sit flush and even on top. All right, people, next day, here is copious amounts of wood filler being used. Now, I think this is where you can take it or leave it. I really did want those little nail holes covered, but looking back, I don't think I would cover the vertical seams. Um, knowing now that I'm doing like this urethane coat on it, I would have just let it ride. That's my final assessment. I would have let it ride, maybe filled in the top of my little nail holes and called it a day. But apparently I really wanted to use some wood filler that day, so off we go. I let this dry once again overnight and here we are the next day going back in with the sander. I realized after sanding some of my nails were actually not sunk down deep enough so I'm just going to give them a quick hit with a nail set and then cruise back in with a little bit of wood filler. Alrighty, I just want to show you here. This, this is called lies. There's no way that that is anywhere close to the same color. Ugh. So where originally I had wanted this roof line to be this beautiful bright pop of yellow, it was reading like safety Crayola in your face yellow and it was not gonna cut it. And so I just switched gears quickly. I grabbed that black spray paint 
And as soon as I started applying it, I was like, oh yeah, this is it. This is the choice. I was afraid it would be too matchy-matchy with the black pergola that I was building for the garden show. But in all actuality, it was lovely. It was like sexy, modern, exactly the right touch that I needed for that garden. So editor's note here, I opted to do a ton of light coats of spray paint because the last thing I wanted after doing all of that sanding and prep work was to end up with a streak or drip running down that beautiful side of the birdhouse. So you're going to see me go round and round here, but it was totally worth it. It is finally time. I actually changed gears. I did a test swatch of the... Uh, both the spar urethane that I picked up and this Minwax Helmsman and I liked this way better It was it just was a beautiful finish. You're gonna see it go on here and it is Glorious it made that wood come alive and I am so pleased with the final product. I Still cannot get over how absolutely lovely the wood grain looked now, you are also gonna see me pause and take a peek here because it is at this point in the construction process that I realized all my little nail holes were showing up and I was so devastated because this was not like a one hour project for me. Like I said, I am not a carpenter. I am a super novice woodworker. And so to put all this time and energy into it, I was just so bummed out. But here's the deal. At the end of the day, they barely showed and it looked just fine. So I want everyone to just see this and be like, yep, we make mistakes, we move on, we're gonna be fine. Alrighty, so once you have your urethane applied, you are going to set this guy aside, take a nice little break, and come back fresh the next day to apply the top and side. My next step is to trace the outline of the body of my birdhouse. That way, when I go to nail the lid to the body, I have a very clear guidepost and I don't run the risk of blowing a nail out through the face of the birdhouse, which I have worked for days to create at this point. One last thing I will note here is that after I had nailed the top and the sides to the birdhouse, I actually went back in and taped off all of the wood, the urethane wood that you see, and hit the roof line with one last coat of that black spray paint. I just wanted that clean edge to be total perfection at the show. So here she is, the final product. This is literally the first birdhouse I have ever made in my 43 years on this earth. It was perfection and it was such a beautiful, beautiful handmade touch to add to the garden at the Flower and Garden Show. Thanks for coming along on this little garden adventure. I would love to have you join me for more future episodes. So hit that like button, hit that subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Bye. You know what's gonna be funny is when I do my voiceover, I'm gonna be like, well, you guys, let me tell you, if there's something I'm good at, it is picking the most warped boards alive. Oh, like a bird has to serve. It'll be easy, Jason. <laughs>